It's showtime. Hey guys, Django Fed here, heading down games, comics, TV shows, movies, and more. And welcome to another episode of Foreign Film Madness, where I review random foreign films that I feel like reviewing. So today we have Hero. This is a Chinese martial arts film that came out in 2002 with an American release in 2004 and directed by Zhang Yimou. Uh, Yimou, forgive me. Who directed many films such as House of Flying Daggers, uh, Curse of the Golden Flower, and The Great Wall. Eey. Master filmmaker Quentin Tarantino. I'll, I'll, I'll get to him later. Presents Hero, starring martial arts legend Jet Li as fearless warrior who rises up to defy an empire and reunite a nation. With supernatural skill and no fear, a nameless soldier, played by Jet Li, called Nameless, embarks on a mission of revenge against the fearsome army that massacred his people. Acclaimed by critics and honored with numerous awards, Hero was an Oscar and Global and Golden Globe nominee. Alright, so this stars Jet Li as the protagonist known as Nameless and uh, based around the story of Jin Kei's assassination attempt on the King of Qin in 227 BC. So it's loosely similar to the Emperor and Assassin in that concept alone, but that movie, The Emperor and the Assassin, that's more of a historical and almost realistic base. Now, it takes that concept alone of Jin Kei's assassination attempt and includes an insane martial arts uh, take akin to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and which, which I still have never seen. That's crazy, I know, but I still have never seen it before. So, as you can expect, it has this high-flying action with the strings attached, so they're jumping around insanely. Now, the film also stars Tony Leung, as Broken Sword, who also played as Zhao Yu in Red Cliff. I can't wait to review that, man. <laughs> Maggie Cheng as uh, Flying Sword, who is the lover of Broken Sword. Uh, Chen Diao Ming as the King of Qin. And Donnie Yen, aka Ip Man, as Sky. So the assassin played by Jet Li comes to the King of Qin with the swords of the assassins he killed. Um, to get closer to the king and assassinate him. So Jet Li meets with the king and from there he recounts the stories of how he killed the assassins and it isn't until later that we have the king will have more stories and suspects Nameless to be lying. Now each story is very unique and has a very distinct aesthetic look to it. The first is a very you know green look to it um, associated with water and this is where Nameless fights Sky. It's an incredible scene where they're fighting in the rain and with this enchanting Chinese music playing. Then we have the second story where everything is a bright red color with uh, flying snow and broken sword and how Nameless plays them. So from the color alone you saw a number of themes and you could predict the number of themes with red depicting violence, uh, deception and blood which all happened in that sequence alone. And each story has a very different look uh, and associated themes to differentiate each and every one. Now going on with the second story we have an amazing a number of extras who are playing as troops and assembling outside the city of Zhao and fire volley after volley of arrows into the city. Just great cinematography, use of extras, and set design. One advantage I will also give this movie over Emperor and Assassin is the soundtrack. The music is entrancing and incredibly memorable. The one track, the main track uh, notably, is reused quite a bit but instantly catches your attention and as soon as you hear it, this is Hero. Okay, This is the movie in a nutshell. And the fight choreography is excellently done, especially when you have the likes of Jet Li involved and Ip Man. I mean, come on. Uh, even though he's not shown that much Ip Man, um, uh, Donnie Yang, uh, he's still pretty good when he's shown. Just Jet Li is the true star, as you can expect. There is just one scene that I found really beautiful and very peaceful at the same time. And it is when Broken Sword and Nameless fight. And they fight on a lake. And they're almost like floating on the lake without barely even touching it. So it's like completely flat and there's no ripples whatsoever. 
uh, only when they're like bouncing on their swords. It's an absolutely incredible scene and the real focus is on this just beautifully, beautiful lake. Uh, the imagery alone is just great and it's, I would say it's my favorite scene by far. Very s short scene but my favorite scene I would say. And the ending is very sad and uh, very thought provoking and I'm not really going to spoil it, it's just, ugh, man, it really gets to you. So I am giving Hero a... So at the time I watched this, I was actually pretty young and I was actually disappointed with this movie because of the lack of action, but years later, I have to say I've grown a fond appreciation of this movie. Um, it's a deep movie with um, great storytelling and writing, and it's just a visual treat. Um, I would say it's a masterpiece, but I didn't watch this in its true form in 1080p um, because the Blu-ray does not work for my DVD player for some reason, for my Xbox One. It says it doesn't work. It's like the US release though. It makes no sense whatsoever. And I'll get to the Blu-ray a little bit later. Um, but it's much shorter than The Emperor and the Assassin, which is a bonus. It's like half the time, which is definitely great. And I just, man, the soundtrack alone was just oof, incredible. And there is a theme that might conflict people, and that is respect for authoritarianism and justifies it in this movie. Now, it's not right. It's not right to justify it, but it tries to justify authoritarianism. So the king starts off as someone you really don't trust at all and needs to be assassinated but then you find out you need to sympathize with them as Jet Li did uh, as the king wants to unify China for the good but his rule would be short-lived and would only last for like what 11 or 12 years um, like I mentioned in the Emperor and the Assassin yes it's a different time during the ancient times and what's what not so democracy was not a thing at the time so I kind of get it, but now is it a good thing to respect that? I don't know. So going on with the Blu-ray, I could not watch this on Blu-ray. This is the US release. It should be something I should be able to watch, but I ended up watching this on Netflix. Um, and it was very weird on Netflix because it was in 720p, not in 1080p. So the image was very fuzzy. Um, not the greatest, to be honest. but. It still looked beautiful at the same time, but it still had some fuzzy bits to it, um, and it with many scenes, which I wasn't really a fan of at all. I just really wish I watched this in 1080p in the true format, because uh, I think it would have been glorious. It would have been perfect. Now, finally, I want to end it with the Quentin Tarantino part. Okay. This says, Quentin Tarantino presents Hero. The only reason Quentin Tarantino is involved because he wanted to get the American release of this movie. He wants to get it to the American audience. So Miramax came in, um, he persuaded Miramax to come in and they made American release, um, or they released it in uh, American theaters for two weeks and it made a shit ton of money. The budget was like, what, $35 million, which is a huge thing compared to fucking um, Emperor and the Assassin, you know, times have changed now. Uh, and it made like, what, 53 million, 100? I'm gonna put the numbers somewhere. But uh, it made a shit ton of money, which was a good thing. So that's a good thing that uh, they put that in American release. But at the same time, Quentin Tarantino, you had nothing to do with this movie. It even says, Master Filmmaker Quentin Tarantino presents Hero. You didn't make this movie, motherfucker. Okay, I'm about to go into rant right now. Okay, so I really don't like Quentin Tarantino's films. I really don't. I think they're super overrated. Um, the only film I like is Django Unchained. Pulp Fiction is... Eh. I don't like his movies, okay? I really don't like his movies. I think they're super overrated. Not a fan whatsoever. And this is now another reason why I don't like you, Quentin Tarantino, because you had to put your fucking name on a film you had no part in. No part of you did not direct this movie, you did not produce this movie, you were not involved with this movie whatsoever. You just wanted this to be in, in an American release. That's it. So fuck off, they, Miramax did this stupid idea of putting his name on it. 
And I fucking hate Quentin Tarantino now because of this shit. I've hated him before, but now I hate him even more now. So fuck you, Quentin Tarantino. So that's out of the way. Alright, so uh, that's it from the review. Please be sure to like this video, comment down below. If you've seen Hero, let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel, Django Fett. And we'll see what the next episode is. And I'll see you, my fellow Manduet, Mandalorian brothers and sisters, next time. Ooh, yeah.